because he knows, amen, everything, amen, and he knows exactly what we need, and he knew that today was going to be the kind of day that it is. He knew that we were going to have who we have in this house today, amen, and he prepared a word today, amen, just for us. Somebody say it's just for us. Amen. That's right. We can't have another mix like we got today. Amen. And I always from now on be one missing or one added. But today God knew just the mix. Amen. That would be in here. And he prepared a word for us. Amen. Amen. He prepared a word that says this. Amen. It says that we got to lose our religion. Come on somebody. And get a relationship. Amen. Somebody tell your neighbor lose your religion. I heard people say, you about to make me lay down my religion, amen? But I'm not asking you to lay it down today, amen? I'm asking you to get rid of it, amen? Tell your neighbor to get rid of your religion. Amen. You see, the difference between religion and relationship, amen, religion is how somebody get caught up in doing things, amen, and get caught up on how things ought to be, amen? When relationship, amen, a true relationship dictates what things are, amen. It just, it is what it is based on the love, amen. A religious person today, amen, would have looked over there when them boys came out with all them sirens and lights and stuff. A religious person would have said, Lord, what is this? Amen. This is crazy. This is not necessary. They done turned this place into a club. Amen. But a person with a relationship, I looked and saw them little lights. I said, God, we ain't got enough lights in here for you. <laughs> amen. They tripping. Amen. We should have put some lights in the back and had some flashing in the parking lot. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because if you're going to do something for God, you got to go all out with it. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever want to go all out with somebody? Amen. Oh, I can remember going into rose flower shops for my wife, and I'm going to go all out. I'm going to get her a whole bunch of roses, amen? And when they told me the price, I said, well, yeah, put the dozen in a vase, amen? But I wanted to go all out, amen? I wanted to, to get a whole bunch of them. Come on, somebody. Somebody better go start clapping me, Because I'm making a point, amen, that it's a difference between religion and relationship, amen? Religion is how somebody get caught up in doing things, amen? But a relationship is how you get caught up in doing things, amen? When people, when people do things out of relationship, come on. Amen. There is no limitation to what they're doing. Amen. Amen. When people do things out of passion and out of love, when, it, when it's something that's real and sincere that's coming from your heart. Amen. There's no, there's no bearing on it. Amen. And we got a lot of dated wives, amen, that like to look out the religious window into churches, amen, because David was so excited to get the covenant back into the church, amen, till he started dancing out of his royal clothes, amen, and he was all dressed up with the Versace's and the polo and all these expensive clothes on, amen, and he's supposed to be a classic man, amen, he's supposed to be a dignified man, but he was so in love with God and he was so excited to get his presence back up, he started taking off his Versace and he started tearing off his polo amen. and his wife looked out of her religious window and said you just looking like a fool come on somebody but when you love God amen you get excited about him amen and when his presence come on you amen you start doing things that you didn't think you would do. come on somebody you got some churches they religious they tell you all the time they say we don't play music instruments in here. We sing. But if you get that same Negro a million dollars, they beat drums. <laughs> They'll blow a horn. And I'm going to tell you, God is worth a whole lot more than a million dollars to me. Amen. And sometimes I got to blow a horn. Sometimes we got to shut the music down to give God some praise. And sometimes we got to bring the music in to give God some praise. But religion can't dictate how we worship God. Come on, somebody. When you say a true hymn, it's a song you ain't never heard before. You know why? Because you make it up as you go. Amen. Because you're singing what you're feeling. Amen. And you're singing what's in your heart. Come on, somebody. I used to hear Bishop. Amen. He be singing something. Everybody be singing with him. And he start singing all kinds of stuff. Everybody just looking. What is Bishop singing? Amen. He's singing a hymn from the heart. Amen. Amen. He done went from a religious to a relationship situation. Amen. And my verse ain't going to be your verse. Because God hadn't done for me what he's done for you. And God hadn't done for you what he's done for me. So we got our own verse. Come on. Yeah. But somebody going to be to sing just like they sing. And they sing just what they sing. But God ain't doing the same for all of us. Amen. 
John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he knew exactly the order in which he was speaking. He talked on relationship before he talked on commandments. He talked on the relationship before he talked on the religion. He said, if you love me, oh, by the way, then keep my commandment. Because if you truly love God, the commandment falls in place naturally, or should I say supernaturally? Yeah. Come on, somebody. I'm going to make this thing make sense because if I truly love my wife, amen, I'm not going to cheat on her anyway. Amen. If you truly love God, come on, somebody. There's just some things you're not going to do anyway. That's, that's why I'm talking to the young people today to say, make sure you lose all religion, amen, and pick up a true relationship. Amen. It's a lot of churches would have called some of the deacons down and threw all of us out of here today. Don't you dare bring a turntable into the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. But then they'll go out and try to hit on women and smoke dope and everything else, amen. And you want to talk about our turntable. Come on, somebody. But if a turntable, amen, can help us exemplify the love that we have for God, then bring two turntables, amen. Come on, somebody. You should have been scratching that thing, man. That was a good time for it to come in and do a struck a struck a struck. Come on, somebody give God some praise, amen. in Revelation 2, around the third verse. He said, you have preserved and have endured hardship for my name. And you have not grown weary. You did a lot of things. You did a lot of religious stuff. I mean, church just went on just beautiful. Amen. All your ceremonies were perfect. And all your things were lined up just right. He says, but yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love that you had at first. Come on, somebody. Consider how far you have fallen. This is God talking to one of the churches that kept everything just right, amen. But they start doing things just out of the religion of doing things, amen. They were no longer doing things for the love of God, but they, they were doing things to please the pastor. And they were doing good things to build the board up, and they were doing things to raise money for the church. But where was the love for God? Who gets up on Sunday morning and says, oh, I got to go. I got to hurry up and go to church. Why? Because I love the Lord. Amen. And I can't wait to go into his house. Amen. I can't wait to enter into his gates with Thanksgiving. Amen. The gates is the parking lot. Now, you're not even in the church yet. I can't wait to drive on the parking lot with Thanksgiving in my heart. Who on Sunday say, I love him so much I can't wait to go into his house again. Too many people getting up I have to go to Sunday school. Why? Because I ain't going to sing if I want to get to Sunday school. I got to go to Sunday school. Why? Because overseer said we got to be there this Sunday. I got to get to Sunday school. Why? Because I got to get my hair cut before church. But what happened to waking up? What happened to Saturday? All of a sudden your mind changed from football and from, from all the stuff that you've done all week to all of a sudden you said, oh, church tomorrow. Let me go and get my clothes out. Because I don't want anything. See, see that, somebody lost the excitement, man. I, I remember when we were young and I don't care what was going on. I keep it real with it. It might have been a club night. I don't know. And boy, we messed around and got an outfit, amen, that we thought was fly. My Lord, amen. We laid the whole outfit out. So much so that we made the jeans just the shoes, amen, so it could look like we had it on. I know I ain't the only one did this, amen. We were excited and passionate about what we were going to go the next day, amen. Come on, somebody. God said, where is the love? Where is the passion, amen? If you come in here with passion, God said, I promise you, I'll make it better than any club you've ever been in, amen? If you come in here in love with me, amen, I'll make you feel better than anybody that you ever had. Come on, if you just come in here with something, amen, I'm going to give you more than what you come in here with. But sometimes we leave with nothing because we come with nothing. We got to bring something, to take something. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to make that thing happen for tomorrow, right? 
right now. Amen. Whatever you trust in God for this week, it got to happen now. Amen. You got to bring that faith in right now. You got to bring that praise in right now. You got to bring that worship right now, baby. For something to jump off for you Monday. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Say, consider how far you have fallen from me. Repent and do these things you did at first. If you do not repent, then I will come to you and remove your left stand from his place. God, you know, we got to understand that God expects things from us. And man, people want to always put God in this religious box of what God will and what God won't do. One saved, always saved. That bus runs by every church every week. That bus comes from hell and people get on it every week. <laughs> if once saved, always saved, if this was true, the Bible wouldn't say that even the righteous scarcely make it in. You got to, you, 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 you got to work, you got to do this thing on a daily basis. You got to love God every day. But his love is what makes it easy. Come on, somebody. Because I was just like y'all. When I was in my 20s, I thought, Lord, how could I ever be a man that don't cuss? How could I ever get married and not cheat? How could I ever not enjoy drink? Amen. But something happened to me. Amen. I had a leader that stood before me. Amen. And he displayed the love of God. Amen. I didn't always hear what he said from the scripture, but I always saw his admiration and his adoration of God. Amen. How much he adored God. How much he loved God. Come on, somebody. And his love of God just touched me. Amen. I said, this man truly loved God. Amen. And I began to go in that area. I just wanted to talk to God. And I just wanted to walk with God. And I just wanted to know God for myself, amen. And somewhere one day in a midnight hour, amen, God came to me and touched me and I said, God, I would never, amen, come on somebody, I would never leave you, amen. I would love you for the rest of my life, amen. And now all of these things come easy. Yeah, I want to cuss somebody out sometimes, but the love of God say don't say a word. Sometimes you want to kick somebody dead in the name. At least I said it right, because y'all would have said neighbor, and y'all would have knew what I was talking about. But you want to kick a band in the neighbor. But the love of God said, don't kick that person. Go ahead on about your business. Hey Amen. Come on, somebody. James 1, 26 and 27 say, those who consider themselves religious, and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue, they deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. And it's amazing that the Lord used the smallest muscle in your body to use as an example that if you can't control the tongue, baby, what can you control in your religious life? Amen. That same tongue that's supposed to bless and that same tongue that's supposed to pray to God, amen? It's that same muscle that people show us that they are religious and not relationship people. Amen? That they're deacons and they're overseers and they're pastors and evangelists and all of these things, but it's easy for them to cuss. It's easy for them to talk crazy. It's easy for them to engage in gossip. But God says that your religion is worthless if these things are part of your lifestyle. Right. Amen. But it's a relationship with God that, that, that filters what you say. Yeah. It's your relationship with God that convicts you when somebody is talking about somebody to you. Amen. It's hard to love people. And it's so hard to love black people. That's the God on his truth. Because we can be some of the most stubborn, stiff and naked. I know, I, I, I live, I know a lot of black people. I think I can speak on it. Hey Amen, I knew an old coach say, there's two things I can't stand. In words and flies. And he said, the more I'm around N-words, the more I like flies. <laughs> the 
that's rough, ain't it? But when you establish a relationship with God, we become easier to live with. And we become easier to get along with. And we become easier to forgive one another and to love one another. Come on, somebody. And all of a sudden, poo poo them and, and uh, Betty Jean them and all them people that you can't stand from high school, all of a sudden, you're able to pray for them and ask God to forgive them and, and wish well for them and, and be happy for them. Come on. Because when you're in a religious situation, you hear about somebody you don't like get blessed and you start crying and get mad about it. Amen. But when you have a relationship with God, you get excited about somebody else's blessing. Come on, somebody. As I get ready to leave, uh, we got to be careful that our church is not like Romans chapter 2. Because they had a mixture of Jews and Gentiles that were getting together. And Paul talked about the fact that the Jews were trying to make the Gentiles get circumcised. And the Gentiles were like most brothers. They were like, hold up now. You should have done that when I was a baby because I'm old now. And they were really trying to put this religious thing on them. But, and Paul said, wait a minute. Y'all Jews keep focusing on behavior situations. He said, God, won't, if anything going to be circumcised, it says circumcise your heart. Move the stuff from around your heart that stops you from falling in love with God. Amen. Because your love for God is the thing that's going to matter most. Come on, somebody. Can somebody circumcise your heart today? Can you look inside and start digging deep and think about the uncle that molested you? Think about the girl that left you? Think about the person who snuck you? Think about all these things that were done to you that your heart still holds? Come on, somebody. And start peeling away all these things, amen, that you've held for so many years, amen. And see how all of a sudden you become freer to love the Lord. Words say, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that set us from our God. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's why, young people, it's important that you get caught up more in a relationship than a religion. The, the church should never look the same way. You're going to always have standards, and the standards is this, that you got to love God with all your heart and all your might. Amen. Sometimes you might take the offering up time you get there. Sometimes you might not do it to the end. Sometimes you may drive up and everybody out in the parking lot say we're going to have church out there. You can't never get caught up on a pattern of behavior. But you got to get caught up on a relationship with God that no matter what they're doing in there, no matter when they're doing it, they're doing it because they love God. Come on, somebody. You know what James 1 and 27 says? It says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows and look after people when they in distress and poor and all that. And then to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. To keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We got to make sure that the stuff that's going on out there, we don't start doing it for ourselves. Amen. Come on, somebody. Then that's what you call true religion. I ain't talking about the genes. I'm talking about the relationship. Y'all still with me? So Paul talked about circumcising the heart. And that's what it's all about. Because 1 Samuel 16 and 7 tells us that we look on the outside. But God looks at the heart. And we got a lot of single ladies in the house today because they look at the muscles and they look at the way the lips shape and they look at the way the, the goatees contoured around the face. Amen. They look at the height and they look at the hair. Amen. They look at all of these things, amen, instead of looking at the heart of this man. Amen. And if you can, some of these chubby brothers around here, man, and some of these dumpy chubby brothers around here, man, got some good hearts, man. Amen. And if you can be more like God, amen, and look on the inside of this brother instead of on the outside of the brother. I got some wife there. Yeah, I wish I would have looked inside of that big bro. Yeah, he's crazy. Let me tell you something. You got to go back and ask the spirit to lead you. Amen. It's a man out there that's looking to find it. Amen. And the word says that when a man finds a woman, he finds a good thing. But your old ass have found you and you turned him down because you said he was too dark. He was too short. Because you were looking on the outside 
instead of looking on the inside. But God looks on the inside because God is a God of our relationship. I'm closing it. Because we got to be careful that we don't be like Saul before Paul. We got to make sure that we ain't so stuck up on religion that Jesus got to knock us off our high religious horse. God loves us so much that sometimes that if he got to knock you off your horse and blind you for a minute, he will. Amen. Because some of us can't see till we get blinded. Amen. Come on, somebody. And some of us got to be knocked off a high horse, in other, in other words, in order to really meet Jesus. Amen. Because a lot of us have only met church. But we've never met Jesus. Amen. That's why Paul, Jesus had to say to Paul, man, why are you persecuting me? Amen. In other words, Saul said, who are you? He said, I am the Christ. Amen. He had to introduce himself. Uh, Jesus is here today to introduce himself to somebody who just want a relationship. Amen. That just want to lay back all, just want to put down all the things you ever seen in your life growing up. Amen. The picture of everybody dressed in white with fish things on their head. Come on, somebody. The, 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 the thought of somebody out here with a table with a sheet over it, with some grape juice underneath. Amen. Uh -huh. Just all of the things that you ever saw in your in your middle life, amen, that you didn't quite understand. God said, just lay all of that to the side. And just call on me. Just be like Jeremiah 33 3. Just call on me and see it on our answer. Amen. I ain't going to give you no voicemail. Amen. I'm going to answer your call, baby, and I'm going to say something back to you. Amen. Just establish a relationship with me. Oh, this is good. But it's time for us to get to really know Jesus for who he is. We, we can't become so religious that we, where we, that we fail to do what God wants us to do. Jonah got so religious that he didn't want to do what God said to do. He got so religious that Nineveh didn't deserve a chance. Amen. He got so religious that, see, you know you're religious when you compete against other churches. God said, no, you didn't labor among you. Amen. And when you love one another, love one another with one thing in mind. Be Christ mind. In other words, if the other churches are trying to get people saved, pray for them. And love them. Amen. Ain't no competition in God. Amen. We all together. A house divided is going to be conquered. Amen. But as long as we all come on somebody. Religious looks at what other church is doing, amen, and want to make a comparison, amen. If they doing it and it works, you ought to thank God for what they doing. That's good. That's good. Praise God. Come on, somebody. But Jonah was so religious that Nineveh didn't deserve to be saved. But somewhere in the bottom of the whale's belly. At the bottom of the ocean. He remembered the relationship before he started tripping. And the relationship led him to a real prayer. Come on, somebody. And that's what it's all about. Sometimes we got to get real with God. And sometimes we got to be like David and say, you know, I messed up with my sheep. But God, you got to forgive me for what I've done. Because I love you more than anything in this world. Come on, somebody. And God is waiting on somebody to come with a bowed down head and a contrite, contrite heart, amen, and a broken spirit so that he can mend you and put you together again. Come on, somebody. You can't get so religious that instead of looking at what you've done, you start looking at who's done worse than what you've done. Yeah, I know I slept around, but she slept around with more people. Come on, somebody. And I know I stole, but that's grand theft over there. Come on, somebody. But that's a religious way of looking at things, amen. But God said, I want you to have a true relationship with me. Anybody still there? Because I'm getting ready to get out of here. I say it like this. Uh, if you're going to be in the choir, know who you're singing to. Come on, somebody. Amen. A lot of times, choirs don't move you, amen, because they just saying words, amen. But when you listen to one that's singing a love song to God, amen, that is not the nature of the song, but it's the content of the song, the words that they're saying, come on, and the passion in which they're saying it, then you're going to be moved by a choir. Come on, somebody. I'm waiting for a church where there's an usher boy that's out there. Come on, somebody. There's not just ushering because somebody told them you couldn't sing, so you got to get on the boat. Amen. 
Because a lot of times we be a usher boys with people who can't sing. Or we pick mean people and say, yeah, she mean and she got to let her get on the usher board because they ain't going to talk if she's standing there. But we got to get somebody that is in love with the order of God. That take the life in the order of him house, of his house. You got to be like somebody who, like, like the queen Sheba, when she came and saw the order of Solomon's house. She was just, her breath left her. And you got to just love the order of God like that and say, God, I want to be part of your order. Oh, yeah. Is anybody still there? Oh, yeah. So I close with this, young people. It's important that you love God with all your heart. Yeah. If you fall in love with God first, yeah. everything else you fall in love with, it lasts. Yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because a lot of us are falling in love with things that ain't lasting in our lives. Because we don't have anything that's going to make it stick. But the first relationship should always be the relationship that we have with God. When you get a relationship with God, all of a sudden the relationship with your parents gets smooth. All of a sudden that old crazy lady and that messed up Negro, all of a sudden you start loving them the way you're supposed to love them. You start loving them with an understanding that, yeah, they may not be perfect, but that's my dad. Amen. And she may not be all this, but that's still my mama. Come on, somebody. And if it had not been for them, then where would I be right now? Come on. Even the messed up stuff they did has something to do with where I am right now. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise for what I'm saying. Because when you get a relationship with God, all of a sudden you and your wife can start getting along right. Amen. You can start getting along. Amen. You don't have to agree on everything. Sometimes you just agree to disagree. Amen. But you stop fighting and fussing and acting a fool. Amen. Because why? You got a relationship with God. Amen. When you get a relationship with God, you ain't going to be seen alone. Amen. You're going to find somebody soon. Amen. Because you know what a relationship looks like. You know the, the beginnings of a relationship. Right now, we don't know. We wouldn't know a good relationship if it came and hit us in the face. Because we don't have a good relationship with God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Our relationship has been like religion. We try to base our relationship off what we saw other people's relationship. Amen. We want to listen to Betty and Sue Ann. I mean, all them been divorced before. Come on. Some of us want to sit up under shade trees and listen to Uncle Johnny and Leroy and them. And they ain't never been married. Amen. But a relationship with God is the beginning of a good, lasting relationship. Amen. So fire. So young people, I say, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and everything that's in you. And I promise you, he's going to love you back. The doors of the church are open. I was looking for a church home. Come now.